hero, hero, can you hear me? Am I getting through? I wonder if you can recognize my voice after all this time. It's been what? Ten years. Ten long, long years. <laughs> Oh, it looks like you do recognize it. Look at that. Your hand went straight down to your hip, even though you don't have a sword sheath there anymore. Silly, silly hero. I remember when you slept with your blade in hand. Have the years really made you so careless and lack? Don't bother looking around for me. I'm not really here. Not physically, anyway. Don't you remember this trick? Back when I tried to turn you and your companions against each other. Yes, you can't forget the second Fatui Harbinger, can you? We're bound together, you and I. We were always destined for each other, to share our fates. I think you never realized that, how much you needed me. When you were identified as the chosen hero, you came right for me, ready to carry out the task you were assigned without even considering what would happen to you without me. I always understood, though. I never tried to destroy you, though I let you think that's what I wanted for a long time. Mostly I wanted to get rid of your ridiculous little band of misfits. I didn't need any of them. But you know that, don't you? You remember what happened when you finally entered my lab. I offered you everything. Riches, fame, comfort, safety. I even offered you my hand in marriage. That one I couldn't help but take personally. Turning down the rest was disappointing. But turning down me as a spouse, me, who could send nations to war with half a smile. That was just insulting. Confused. Oh, I'm sure you thought you killed me. How naive. As if the second Fatui Harbinger could be destroyed with a mere sword regardless of its enchantments. No, you simply killed one of me. It was infuriating, drifting around as a disembodied consciousness. But I wasn't too worried, because I knew that when I fell, you'd fall with me. Oh? You didn't think so. Look at you. You practically live in a shack. You have to grow your own food. You're barely getting by. Don't lie to me, hero. I've been watching you. I saw everything. When you and your friends returned, I'm sure everything must have seemed so wonderful. The whole world was cheering your names. But you can't ride the rest of your life off of a single victory, no matter how glorious. Your little friends understood that. They thought about what was next. They used their fame to start new careers as mercenaries or soldiers. I believe one of them actually became a renowned chef, actually. Another became a funeral parlor director. I rather liked that one, I must confess. But you, the hero, 
No, you couldn't use your fame to open doors. It was selfish, you thought. You told the shogun you were at her disposal to send wherever you were needed. Ah, oh, poor clueless hero, with everyone shouting your accolades. I don't think you could imagine a world where you weren't needed. But it's the very world that you created. With me gone, there was nothing that required your might. Sure, the Shogun might send you on missions for a while, but you were just too much. None of the conflicts you were sent to resolve really needed you. There was nobody strong enough to warrant your involvement. And besides, your skills weren't really all that useful there. Most conflicts in the world aren't won by a single overwhelmingly powerful person. One person could be planned around and avoided. A larger, more versatile force is usually what's needed unless you're facing something like me. And so, you became a relic. Something to hang over the fireplace and admire, but never use. You were master of ceremonies for a while, a celebrity to make appearances and get the crowd excited. And then finally, you weren't even that. The common folk are fickle, and the longer you went without doing anything, the less excited they were to see you. And so, here you are. The Shogun promised a generous allowance for your service. But she really didn't have much reason to honor that once people stopped caring about you. Just look at you. The hero. The one who saved all of Inazuma. Penniless and living in squalor. You see, without me, you're nothing. But I didn't reach through the veil of death just to gloat. You may not believe me, but it brings me no pleasure to see you like this. To see the only mortal worthy of my respect. The only one I ever saw as an equal, disregarded by those beneath them. It brings me only rage. I'm here because I want revenge. Not on you, don't worry. Even in the state you're in, I don't relish a fight with you. No, I want revenge on the vile fools that set you against me in the first place, who convinced you that I was the enemy. You may think that I am, but I don't have to be. Did you ever wonder if you were on the wrong side? <sighs> you still think along such simple lines. You want to talk about atrocities. Your kind have committed as many against us as we have against you. <sighs> of course we came to conquer Tevat. It's the nature of being a successful kingdom to grow larger. I helped the Tsaritsa spread her forces across the entirety of Tevat, leaving Inazuma as the only place to expand to. Do you think the Shogunate hasn't done the exact same thing? Do you think that the very land you stand on right now has never belonged to another nation, another people? What do you suppose they'd think of your shogun? It's our nature to conquer. All mortals can only survive by consuming other living things. Our existence is chaos and destruction. Say what you will about me and the Fatui, 
But there's only one thing you can't deny. We're united. Your shogun may have killed my comrade. You may have banded together to stop me. But you all went right back to squabbling the second I was gone. Under my rule, that would never happen. There would be no infighting or unfair treatment of each other. Think about that. I want to extend to you the same offer I did when you faced me. Join me, and I'll give you everything, even half the world if you want it. Do you want to know why I made that offer? We, the Fatui, we were the first ones to call you hero in our prophecies. The rest of Tevat stole that term and made you out to be their hero. But we believed that you could save whoever you choose. You could be our hero, my hero. We could conquer the entire world and unite it under one rule, together. No, that's a shame. Although you took much longer to decide than last time, I think you're starting to see things my way. Ah, well, I was hoping we could do it the easy way, but... <laughs> Fool, did you think I was powerless? Did you think I was only a voice? I've been... Reborn. What do you think of the new body? It's not too different from the old one, but I made a few tasteful alterations. I'm taking you back with me, and there's not a thing you can do to stop me. Don't bother struggling. Those are cursed chains. You would have had trouble with those in your prime, let alone now. <laughs> Always so valiant and headstrong. But why don't you try actually thinking ahead for once? What would you do if you escaped? You can't fight me in your condition. You're out of practice, and you don't have any of your enchanted gear. Meanwhile, I'm more powerful than ever. I'm afraid that I'm through giving you choices. You're going to do whatever I want now. I'll finish what the mortal started and break you so I can mold you into my perfect servant. Maybe even a partner and spouse if you're very good for me. Don't worry. I won't experiment too much on your mind. You may be a bit of a simpleton, but something about your direct approach led you to victory. But from now on, you'll be putting that brute force method of yours to work for me. Ah, those eyes. Some things never change. Those are still the same eyes I saw when you faced me. You must still resent me. Perhaps even more now than you did back then. Don't worry. In time, you'll understand my point of view. Come along now, dear hero. We have quite a lot of work ahead of us.